Some of us get lost in our day-to-day -day routines, the monotonous flow from waking up to settling in bed to everything in between can get boring very quickly. So it certainly helps to know that life is capable of surprising you in mysterious and rather tragic ways. Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370 left Kuala Lumpur International Airport for Beijing, China. However, the plane and all 239 people aboard never made it to the intended destination. The plane stayed on air traffic control's radar for under an hour before Malaysian military radar tracked it was over the Adaman Sea. Authorities became suspicious when the plane made a hard southwest turn, a massive deviation from its planned flight path. Soon after, the Boeing 777 disappeared off all radar, and communication from the pilot ceased. Later, reports theorized the plane most likely crashed in the Indian Ocean, and radar picked up possible debris from the crash, though no solid evidence of debris was initially found. More than a year later, part of the plane's wing was discovered on an island in the Indian Ocean. We will very likely never know exactly what happened to the passengers of flight MH370, as the situation inside the airplane that day is shrouded in mystery. In regards to its ending, the pilot may have said it best with his last words to air traffic control, All right, good night. Perhaps he was a nobleman, perhaps a servant. Historians are still trying to figure it out, but one thing is for sure. The man harbored dangerous information. Some of King Louis XIV's record mention an unnamed man who was transferred to the prison of Pignerol for having sensitive information about the country. San Mars, the governor of the prison, was instructed to not let the man speak to anyone unless it was for needs like hunger or thirst. If the prisoner uttered one word that didn't pertain to his needs, he was to be killed on the spot. However, historians aren't sure if this is the infamous Man in the Iron Mask that remained masked for over 30 years to silence him. Some records say the mask was steel, not iron, and others say it was black velvet, not metal at all. Still, the mask's purpose was the same, to keep him quiet. San Mars, a retired musketeer, kept the man in the mask by his side throughout all three decades, always ready to end his life if the need arose. In 1703, the man in the iron mask died and was buried under the name Marioli. Perhaps this stood for Ercole Macio, an Italian count jailed for trying to double-cross the king. Or maybe the prisoner was Ustache Duje, the most popular guest from historians. But so far, the man in the iron mask is still a mystery to this day. One of the most devastating things a parent faces is losing their child, and maybe the only thing worse than having a child kidnapped is discovering they have died. Pauline Picard was only two years old when she was stolen from her family's farm in Brittany, France. Her parents immediately sought the police, and locals formed a search party, but there was no trace of Pauline. A few weeks later, the Picards received a call that a little girl matching Pauline's description was found 200 miles away in another city. Immediately, the Picards boarded a train to Cherbourg, anticipating the moment they would reunite with their baby. But after a couple hours with the girl, they sensed something off about her. She didn't recognize them, was very fearful and shy, and her dialect was different from her family's. However, Pauline's mother insisted this was Pauline, putting the discrepancies down to trauma. A couple weeks after Pauline's reunion, a bicyclist found a body of a little girl near the family's farm. She was missing her head, feet, and hands, and near it was the skull of a full-grown male. But the evidence that perplexed the Picards the most were the clothes neatly folded next to the body. 
the very same Pauline War when she went missing. So who was the little girl they claimed as their own? If it was Pauline, how did the toddler travel so many miles from home without anyone noticing? Who was the dead little girl found near the farm? And who did the skull belong to? There are many questions surrounding this mysterious case, and it seems we may never get the answers. Our ancestors have left us numerous scrolls and books, all documenting what life was like for them in their time. Some of them may be difficult for us to understand, but none are as cryptic as the Voynich Manuscript. The Voynich Manuscript has been carbon dated to the 15th century, coming out of the Italian Renaissance. The tome was purchased in 1912 by a Polish book dealer named Wilfred Voynich, hence how it got its name. The manuscript, which is missing pages, has left scholars scratching their heads. Written in a language that has yet to be decoded, only some linguists and coders from World War I and II came close to deciphering it. The illustrations are extremely unusual for its time and place of origin. Professionals have gleaned that the book is broken into six categories, herbal, astronomical, biological, cosmological, pharmaceutical, and recipes, each indicated by the illustrations. The diagrams of the plants are the most perplexing, as none of them match any plant known to this day. There are drawings of the constellations, but also star charts that are impossible to decipher, and it seems the nude women highly intrigued the author. Some believe the manuscript is a hoax, whether from Wilfred Voynich himself or from the writer of the strange book while others believe it is a connection to alien life. Whatever the truth may be, this manuscript is one of the most mysterious books to be discovered in all of history. In 1957, in Hexham, England, two little girls were hit by a car on their way to church. 11-year-old Joanna and 6-year-old Jacqueline died that day, leaving their parents childless and shattered. John, the father, prayed continuously for his girls to come back. A year after the accident, his wife Florence announced she was pregnant, and John was certain she would birth twin girls. Maybe it was fate, maybe it was John's devoted prayers, but whatever it was, Florence gave birth to two baby girls they named Gillian and Jennifer. John noticed that even though the girls were identical twins, Jennifer had two birthmarks that Gillian didn't. A white line across her head and a mark on her leg matching a scar and birthmark that Jacqueline used to have. The twins grew up never knowing the story of their older deceased siblings, but coincidences surrounding their lives coincided with the idea of reincarnation. The twins found and approached Joanna and Jacqueline's toys with a strong familiarity, even though they had never seen them before. They also gave the toys the same names that Joanna and Jacqueline had. They pointed to a school they'd never been to, claiming it was their own. As they walked past an idling car, the twins screamed at the top of their lungs, afraid for their lives, as they yelled out, the car, it's coming to get us. The strangest coincidence John and Florence witnessed was the sinister game the twins played. Jennifer lying on the floor would rest her head in Gillian's lap while Gillian told her blood was coming out of her eye because that's where the car hit her. The mystery of the girl's behavior was studied by a child psychologist named Dr. Ian Stevenson, who believed the girls were experiencing the reincarnation of their sisters. Eventually, the memories of Jacqueline and Joanna seemed to fade, and both Gillian and Jennifer went on to lead normal lives. YouTube is demonetizing my content, making it harder for me to make content for you. If you'd like to help fight this change and keep YouTube creepy, please see my Patreon linked in the description below and consider pledging even one dollar. It'd be a tremendous help. You'll get exclusive access to things I'm working on, including updates and even beta access to a one-of-a-kind horror video game that I'm producing. Plus, a number of other rewards are available. So again, check out patreon.com slash robdyke linked in the description below and consider giving anything you're willing to help keep YouTube creepy. Thank you for listening.
And be sure to check out another one of my videos, and of course, subscribe to my channel now, because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.